sadly, a lot of people in sales, they feel so nervous that they, uh, that they don't listen deeply. They listen for the sale. I think if you can get the person's situation, get them in their situation, and get where they're trying to go, and deliver that with absolutely no uh, motive to sell them on anything, but believing that your product or service will reveal itself as something that's helped them, uh, help them get where they want to go. The person you're speaking to doesn't care about finding a solution to their company's problem. I mean, they care, but it's secondary. What they're listening for is, will they buy something that will cause their boss to give them a raise, a promotion, and say, that was one of the best purchases our company's made? And they're also uh, listening for, am I going to buy something that's a piece of junk? And my boss is going to say, what the heck were you thinking? Instead of qualifying loosely, um, in order to selfishly then present my reasons why I think you should buy from me and uh, the logical reasons that I think uh, make sense. Um, that, if you do that and then you try and close and put your hand in someone else's pocket, you'll invariably create resistance. If you push against them, they will push back against you. Newton's third law says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So agree up front, mutual purpose. Why are we here? What do we both want to achieve? And also create parity so that we have equal business stature. I see this all the time where salespeople put the prospect on a pedestal because they have more money than them or they have a job title or because they have cash and the salesperson wants and probably needs it because they're living off credit cards. And so what they do is they go into prescription before diagnosis, which, as Mark will attest, is malpractice in medicine. And it's the same in sales. If you prescribe to them your solution before you've got to the root cause of the problem and you just jump on a symptom, then you're guilty of selling malpractice. If you want to get through to people, you, can't, you have to get through to them via an experience. And there's something that I call the power of analogy. And so what I would say to uh, salespeople is, give me several instances where someone talked over you or at you and kept interrupting you from anywhere in your life. And then you get them to re-experience what it's like being pressured. And you drill down to a point where when you said, well, how did that feel? Awful. Did you resent them? Absolutely. Would you be open to what they're saying? Not really. And then you make the connection uh, through that analogy. And if you're lucky, they'll go, oh my God, that's what I'm doing. In, in Sandra, we often talk about self-concept and money concept. You will only perform to the level your self-concept will allow. And you will only perform, you're, you're earning today exactly what you believe you're worth. Not a penny more, not a penny less. So if you think $200,000 is a lot of money, selling something for a million bucks is going to be a real stretch. So one of the things that I, I will talk about, if you want to break through to anyone, uh, and this is what I would say to salespeople, is tell me about a situation you know, that was a challenging situation or a situation that didn't work out for you. And so they'll bring up the situation and, and get them to really describe it in detail. Uh, and then when they describe it in detail, they're re-experiencing it. And you have to be a non-judgmental you know, manager because you're trying to improve them. And so when they describe the situation of the failed sales call, uh, so that's what happened. And then what you say to them is, so what did you think when that happened? Well, you know, I thought I was going to get the sale, but then it suddenly went sideways. What did you feel? Oh, I, I went from confident to suddenly, you know, I, I was just, you know, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was up, up a creek without a paddle. What do you think would have been a better thing to do? Is you have to get them into an experience and then you actually show that there's a pattern that their mind followed to form that belief. You should never be the smartest person in the room and you should always struggle. So you, Columbo, uh, the TV detective, is the, probably the best salesperson who's ever walked the face of the planet. And um, because he was vulnerable, people opened up to him. They never saw him as a threat. And when you tie that with nurture, 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 and paying real attention and focusing on listening as a whole body experience for insight, then people will open up to you.
But the key is be vulnerable first. What I will say to people is every time you make a, a sales presentation, put yourself afterwards, put yourself in the shoes of the customer and how would they rate you in terms of understanding their situation, understanding them and their situation, and understanding where they wanted to go. And the one rule is you can't beat up on yourself. What you have to do is say, how could I, how could I be better the next time? And if people think that, the, well, that's too, too much psychological jargon, if you say, well, how successful do you think the, the call was if you had no idea about their situation, you had no idea about where they were personally in that situation, and, 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 and you didn't, and so as a result, you weren't relevant to them. You just wasted their time. How successful do you think you'll be? And most people get that. Uh, but I think that's a way to uh, often improve yourself uh, after you have any uh, a sales conversation. The kind of things that I teach my clients to do are for a week, just observe language patterns. Then for another week, observe body language. Uh, observe things like blink rate, uh, pupil dilation, um, the coloration of the skin, um, the uh, coloration of the throat and the ears, um, their body gestures. So for example, people will often fiddle with their wedding ring uh, or they'll stroke their hand. These are pacifying moves. And these are great indicators that someone is uncomfortable. As people talk, you want to focus on four things. Focus on hyperbole when they say awful or amazing. Focus on inflection. Uh, we really need to get this done soon. Focus on adjectives which embellish a noun or adverbs which embellish a verb because those are little the tips of the iceberg into more. And so when someone brings up, we have this awful situation, such and such, what do you think? What you say is, I can tell you what I think, but say more about the awful. And when you do that and you focus on the, any of those four things, they'll lean in more. And the more they say uh, that has emotional spin on it, the more they're going to want to know what your answer is. And then even then, what I would say, even if you have an answer, you could say, I could tell you what I think, but you've told me some important things. And my, my answer would be a B, B plus, And I don't want to cheat you out of my best answer. But to do that, I want to check on some things. So do you want me to make the effort to check on some things so I can give you my best answer since you've told me all these things? And, and if so, how soon do you want to follow up? So you, so you open them up and you keep them wanting and needing your answer.